Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Madison <laughs> Cox. Uh, so you were in, were you in Des Moines? I was in Des Moines. That's correct. Okay. So can you take me th- pretty much th- through your last month, just kind of, you know, a synopsis of, of how, how things have been during this, this, uh, this quarantine time? Yeah, well, um, the brief synopsis in one word kind of that wraps it all into one, I think, would be crazy. Um, Just something super unprecedented, obviously, we could have never expected. And I still think there's there's new things every day that I'm like, how is this the world we're living in? But, um, you know, you adapt and you adjust and you figure it out. And, you know, you might have some some crazy days in there where it just sucks. But then you know, eventually you, you move forward. And so, you know, ever since Des Moines, it's pretty much been like that. I remember getting back, um, you know, and coronavirus at that time was ramping up, uh, not too serious of a threat. I remember, you know, wiping down the trade table on the plane flight back. And I was like, eh, I feel a little uncomfortable, but not, not, not too bad. And then, I mean, I think it was that week that it really um, ramped up. Um, that Thursday, I think was the day that, um, and it, it kind of hit when, um, sporting events started getting canceled right and so then it's like wow like this is really affecting me like this is going to be pretty serious um and and I think when NCAAs was canceled that day was probably the craziest and then you know from there I was just worried about the games and what's going to happen this summer um so the timeline after that I was supposed to go the next day I was supposed to go to the OTC to start a training camp that ran through yesterday actually um yesterday I would have been leaving the OTC <laughs> yeah. to go to Mission okay. Viejo um so uh I you know that trip got canceled last minute um so I was still in Austin um I had a pool to train out and I was like okay this is a little weird like I can't train out Texas but I'm training and it's fine um and then all of a sudden you know Austin went on lockdown as you know um and then I, I didn't really have anything and I don't really have any home equipment at Austin because I always um had trained in um at the UT facilities so um my sister lives in Austin so me and my sister and Dean decided to come home to Lubbock and we would quarantine here and stay here um and we've been doing that it's it's been pretty pretty crazy but I'm, I'm thankful you know it's got a lot of open space out here so we can go outside a lot my mom has a Peloton bike we've been riding that um, just finding out ways to stay fit and then beyond that, just staying happy and staying sane. So, um, it's been really helpful. My dog is here with us and we actually, we have five dogs in my house right now. So, oh, wow. um, it's, it's, a, it's a little crazy, but I think it's, it's good because we're not just sitting there, you know, twiddling our thumbs or playing with the dogs or having, we're going out playing pickleball in our driveway. Um, yeah. we're, we're making the most of it. It's definitely not ideal. Um, it, it did hit pretty hard when the Olympic games got, um, postponed. That was, mm. that was pretty hard. Cause I had to, you know, really fully evaluate my life really for the next year and what I was going to do. Yeah. Um, in the end, you know, obviously it was the right call. It was the best decision that you know, could, could have been made. It took a lot of stress off of, you know, athletes, I think myself included, hopefully as a whole, um, you know, we don't have to stress about training and, and doing something unsafe and, and breaking quarantine procedures just to get a workout in, you know, we can really focus on our own um, health right now and, and more so the communities and the global the world health. So um, I'm happy we we're able to do that, but it was, it did take a bit of rescheduling and, 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 you know, mapping things out differently in my mind. It's kind of crazy. We, we have these four year plans that we set, you know, from 2016, I had planned you know, whatever year was going to be like. And I don't think a single one of those years has really panned out (laughs) the way that I I, have set in my mind, but you know, it's just another little obstacle that we're going to get through and and be better from. Yeah, dude. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm, you know, I think, I think everyone has had a really hard time kind of having to reevaluate. And um, obviously, you know, I know you were planning on med school and, um, and, you know, that's, that's, I'm sure that's its own roadmap. How, what, what, what are a, a few of the steps you've taken in that reevaluation as in like, how, you know, where do you start? Um, you know, wh- wh- when you get news like that and it kind of just shatters everything that you've planned for that year, um, like, where do you start to, to, to like, okay, here's how we draw up the new plan. Yeah. So that, that kind of all started, I guess, just with, 
a mental evaluation. You know, what do I want in my heart? Um, do I, do I want to continue training for another year? Do I want to give a shot at it and keep on going? Or would I be happier just, you know, hanging up the, the suit and cap and goggles and just, and starting my journey in medical school. And, um, I started there and, you know, I, I knew I had an inkling to, I, I just want to keep swimming and I want to, um, I want to, you know, put everything I can into the games now that's next summer. Um, and then it, then from there I proceeded to talking to, you know, my family, my the people closest to me, what do they think? You know, and I, I got some really good insight actually from my mom, maybe it was my dad. I don't remember one of my parents and they said, you know, you have, you have the rest of your life to become, you know, to be a physician and to work towards that goal and to be that person. Um, you have one more year at this. So, so that's kind of when I, um, solidified, you know, my, my decision to continue training. And then from there, I mean, I still don't know about med schools. I'm still waiting to hear back from some of them haven't made a final decision. So part of that final decision now is going to have to be, will you let me defer a year and will, um, you be able to support these plans of mine? Um, so I, I'm really hoping it'll all work out in that area. Um, uh, I'm a big believer in, you know, what's, what's meant to be will be. And so I, I think that, this will all um, kind of shake itself out and, um, and it'll all work and it'll, it'll be okay. So we still, yeah, nothing completely finalized, but I know um, it's kind of finalized in my mind, in my heart on what direction I'm set for. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm impressed that you still want to uh, go after a medical career after this last month. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, honestly, it's, it's on like, I think it's more so driven me more to the medical field. You know, I see my dad going in every day, you know, working okay. his absolute hardest and, and, you know, really helping in this pandemic. And I think that's, well, that's what I want to do. I, that's why I'm going to medicine is to help people. And something like this, it kind of brings it even further to your attention of how um, instrumental the medical field is in the global health and safety and everything. And so I, I, I definitely want to be a part of that one day yeah not not next year now <laughs> <laughs> right does is was your dad a big proponent in in you wanting to also be in the medical field um not necessarily I think my dad and both okay. my parents are just big proponents of me being happy and going for what I whatever I aspire to to go to and be so um I I think he he's given me a lot of guidance but I don't I've never felt like he pushed me um and you know like pushed his opinions onto me Mm -hmm. what was he an, an inspiration in that like was yeah, you absolutely. seeing him in that did that make you want to also be in the medical yeah field? absolutely I mean I've I've always looked up to my dad and in in the professional field is no different so absolutely nice um okay so so uh you talked about home workouts that that peloton bike how do three people ride it at once <laughs> yes so it's not it's actually five people um it's my whole family and um yeah we just we just cycle through we have a little spray bottle we everyone has to spray it down because we we do get pretty sweaty when we're working out on it but it's so fun I mean you get to pick your own workout or, or sometimes I'll see Dean do a workout I'm like oh that looks like a fun one I want to do that one today so I'll hop mm -hmm. on and I'll do that same ride and we, we kind of challenge each other too we every time we get off the bike he's like oh what well, you know there's a there's a leaderboard for the peloton he's like what what place did you end up and we always try to you know he generally he's better than me so he he'll, he'll beat me um he can get a, a higher output as well but um but it's still kind of fun to see and, and keep track of now is that based on is the leaderboard based on like distance or like power I get what is that how does that work? It's, so it's a, it's a combination of cadence and resistance. And so that, that, those two numbers give you your output. And so I think okay. the output number is what really ranks you on that uh, leaderboard. Gotcha. Interesting. And so what else have you guys been doing um, in terms of at home workouts? Um, Oh, Fernando's Fernando just joined me. This is my dog, Fernando. <laughs> All right. Oh. Have you ever been on a swim swim interview? I don't think he has. You okay. deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> the real star of the show. Um, yeah, we've been, I mentioned pickleball in our, in our driveway. We've been playing a ton of pickleball. I mean, two, sometimes twice a day, hours on end. They have to peel me off that court. It's so much fun. Yeah, um, and th that's, so, like, that's pretty skillful, right? Because there's a certain order you have to hit it in. Is that right? 
Yeah, it's it's definitely there's like a lot of really like nuanced rules in the game. Um, we've actually been playing it for a little while, not this consistently, and definitely not this much. Um, mm-hmm. But we we were familiar with it, knew the rules, and my mom is a big pickleball player, so she she plays a lot. She's really good, actually. Um, and Dean is extremely good. He reaches his arms out and he takes up the entire oh, court, so it's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hard to hit one past him um but yeah yeah there we've usually played doubles so 2v2 and um we'll just go out there and hit for hours and play endless games and that, that that's really what what's taking most of our time um aside from that let's oh i'm i'm painting i'm doing my um watercolor cards i've been doing a lot more than usual and just trying to send as many out as possible um a good way to like just keep in touch with friends and family aside from you know obviously facetime calls uh, with them, which has been nice. Um, we play some board games. We've been playing um, this game called Deception. It's kind of like Avalon or um, Mafia, I think was the other name for the game. Okay. That's what we played back then. But yeah. 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 Nice. Uh, reading books, actually. We've had tech, or Carol got um, everyone, or she started this book club, so she got everyone onto this book called The Choice, and so we're all reading it and having a little book club, virtual book club as a team, which is kind of cool. With the, oh, that's with the whole team. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's The Choice about? Um, it's actually a Holocaust book, so it's a little sad, but I think it's good for this time because it kind of puts everything into perspective and even though you know the woman the main character who's going through all this and going through all these hardships she still has a way to um turn it so that you know there's positive that comes out of there's light that shines out of the situation so it's it's actually it's a really good book i am not finished yet i think i'm about halfway through um so yeah but i've been really enjoying it how often do you guys book club like how often do you meet we actually haven't had an official meeting. I just, okay. I think that that's why, you know, that I, we were told that we all read the book and we're going to have a book club about it, but we ha- haven't actually um, had that meeting. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you still like keep in touch with Carol fairly regularly? Like, are you telling her your workouts or your pickleball scores or? <laughs> um, not my pickleball schools scores, but my workouts for sure. Um, I call her. I mean, not even just for workouts. I, I think we talk probably every other day or so, just kind of to keep in touch, make sure we're both staying sane and happy. Um, and yeah, and I mean, Carol's such, she's more than like just a coach to me. So um, it's been really good and important, I think, to keep that line of communication open between us. Definitely. How, yeah. with with all this abnormality, you know, it's, it's been about a month now. How, how do you feel you've adjusted? You know, like your day to day now is so different than, you know, when you're training. Yeah. How, you know, how do you, how do you feel you've adjusted to? Yeah, that's, now? that's a really good question. And I, I, I feel like I'm still adjusting, but I think I've found a way to, I, I just felt like, you know, with swimming every day and having that regular schedule, first of all, you, yeah, you have that regular schedule. Second of all, you, you feeling, you get a feeling and sense of accomplishment every day. And I have just learned that I need to find a way to do that for myself. So, um, I've just, I've, I've set that goal in my mind every day. I'm going to find a way to challenge myself further and to get better in one area or the other. So, um, I actually, we ordered a pick, uh, not obviously the pickleball net. I'm getting better at pickleball, but a pull-up bar and so I, every day I add one more pull-up on so before the quarantine I had a max of 15 pull-ups I think two days ago I did 22 pull-ups in a row so that that's just like one way that I'm making sure I'm like becoming a you know feel, having a sense of accomplishment and, and feeling that I got better today um so it's just you know it's not going to be a time at a set and during a set or anything like that that I'm going to find that but I've um that's one way I think I've adjusted well is finding something to feel accomplished by and it's 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 nothing um it's not always that big you know some days it'll be um meditating that day you know I'm, I have a really hard time with meditating or um, yeah, doing a great Peloton ride or just something, just something else. I just set a goal for myself when I wake up and also try to stick to a schedule. And with that schedule, also keeping my sleep schedule, um, you know, as consistent as possible. So I think those are some of the little things that I've definitely had to adapt. And I think I've, that I've done better throughout this whole quarantine and shelter in place thing. Um, 
but definitely still room for, for improvement. Hopefully won't be too much longer, but I still, um, yeah, want to, want to get better at this whole thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would like to talk about meditation with you because I yeah. think I, I have also, um, last month, I think I had a goal of, of trying to sit for 10 minutes every day. And that was so challenging. Um, yeah. So, so what, how did you, you know, tell me about your history of meditation. Is it, you know, when, when did that start for you? How did you get turned on to that idea? Yeah. Uh, I think so. It was my junior year. I mean, you know, I always heard about meditation and I was into yoga and they, they, they throw in some aspects of meditation in there, but it wasn't until my junior year that I actually was like, okay, I'm going to try this. Um, and the reason I tried it is because Carol gave me a book called 10% Happier. Uh, I think Stan Harris is the author and he really talks about meditation. I mean, he's like, it, it's, it helps with more than just, you know, mindfulness. It, I mean, it is mindfulness, but it also can reach into all these different areas of your life. And, you know, I struggle with sleep a lot. So that's one, one uh, that was one really big draw for me. Um, and I'm just, I'm just terrible at just sitting still. I always like to be doing something and being productive, getting something done. Um, so I downloaded the app. I downloaded at that point, I think it was called 10% happier. And I've gone through a bunch of different apps. I did calm, um, that app. And then right now I use headspace. Um, but I, when I initially started, I was doing a, um, I did it just self. I just, um, run myself through stuff and just try to, um, self-directed yoga or um, meditation, I guess. And it did not go very well. Same thing. I set this lofty goal of like 10 minutes per day. And it was just like, I was just like dreading that 10 minutes. So that's when I started um, doing uh, meditation that was led by, you know, someone else and just downloading apps and doing that. And I found it a lot easier to maintain it. And then also I felt like I was actually getting something out of it and feeling like it was, you know, helping and, and doing something for me, I guess. So, um, I'm not as great, you know, I'm not that consistent, but I've, that was one of my goals for this whole quarantine time is to become more consistent and, um, really get back into the, the groove of meditating at least once a day, at least, I mean, the Headspace app, they have three minute ones. So, that, I mean, anyone has three minutes of their day, right? Like I spend, I don't even, I spend too many minutes on social media. So I de <laughs> definitely have three minutes to do something for myself. So, yeah. And so if you, if you can describe it in any way that you can, what do you feel like you get out of that? Because I know, <laughs> I feel like meditating, like the idea of it that maybe like is in society is so different than like me personally, what I have found, what meditating is. Right. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, I don't know. But so, so what do you find that you get out of a practice like that? Yeah, I, so what I really like about it, and I mentioned this word was just mindfulness. So to be able to, I, I think I have better control over like my emotions, both happy, angry, everything. Um, and then also it, it has helped with my sleep to be able to feel like I control my mind. I can do that, you know, and, and I, there's even, um, meditations that lead you to, that are for sleep that leads you to go getting, you know, um, able to fall asleep better. Um, but I, I really like the mindfulness. I, there was one that I listened to, I mean, months and months ago, but I, this is how I really think that it's one way that, um, uh, meditation has helped my mind is that, um, sometimes your mind feels like there's a train below and it's just crashing and you're in, you know, and that's, that could be what the emotions you're feeling and everything like that. You know, when you're really angry or something happens and it ticks you off, but you can just meditation helps to set you apart, to set you kind of, I think of it on like, as like a cliff looking over that train wreck and just watching it happen, just letting it happen. It happens, it's there. And then it, and it eventually moves away and you're still sitting there and you're still who you are. So that's kind of how I like to think about it. I do. I get really angry. Like when I do competitive things or when I lose, when I lose that pickleball there, I mean, I, I <laughs> with my entire mood, um, and it really helped with that. And yeah, to, to let me you know, I, I am experiencing these feelings. I'm experiencing this anger, but I am just going to let it pass. It is what it is. And you know, there's, there's happiness that's, that's going to come around later. Um, but that, that's one analogy that I've 
I learned from meditation and I also think has helped me um like meditation has helped me with so yeah do you do you um when you do meditate do you do it uh, at the same time of day or do you have different times of day where you do it just depending on the day yeah it, it just depends on the day and it's whenever I have time and um and and yeah and and, and a lot of times you do have to make time for it because you, you'll just be I can be twiddling my thumbs for a while and finally like oh my gosh what am I doing like I need to go I need to go meditate you know yeah. um so it's afternoon I don't love doing it right before bed um but, and I'm like not great about doing it right when I wake up. So yeah, usually midday. Yeah. Um, have you watched anything? So meditation aside, have you watched anything great on TV? I know I've consumed so much Netflix and Hulu in the last four weeks. How about um, you? I, I can't say, I wish I could say the same, but I can't. I watched one episode of Tiger King um, just for the hype, you know? <laughs> And I, and then you and dropped then, it. You didn't finish it. Well, no, I was, go, I was, I had all plans on you know, continuing to watch it, but my sister and Dean were like, they had to watch it at one point when I was doing something else. I think I was doing it like a, um, a conference call. I've done like some webinars with different club teams throughout the country. So I, I was doing one of those and they decided to watch a full episode without me. So I just, you know, I let it go. I, you know, use my meditation skills. So just let it go and let it fly. I think that's unforgivable. <laughs> I can't believe they watched Tiger King without you. I'm very upset. I have not rewatched. I have not gone back and watched the episode. Um, I did watch a couple episodes of Ozark. Uh, my parents were watching it when I was in the room. So I watched it too. Uh, it was actually pretty good, but it was the last season that I watched, so I didn't get like half. Of it, but, um, okay. So, yeah, that. Um, so and I really like that show. I I started that a long time ago, and I haven't gotten back to. I've watched like three episodes of like the first the first three of Breaking Bad, and I haven't gotten oh, back yeah. to it yet. Yeah, that that was was a really good show. <sighs> nice, yeah. Um, but I, from what I can tell, Ozark is super similar. Yeah. Um, well, cool. So any, I guess on a closing note, um, any thoughts you have just kind of moving forward from where you're at right now today um, through this time of quarantine? Um, not, not really. I mean, just, just really trying to stay happy and um, healthy, healthy. Is the, I mean, that's the number one and happy obviously as well. And to, keep challenging myself so if anyone out there has any challenges for me or shows for me anything like that I, I take them um I'll happily take them to heart and, and see what I can do awesome thank you so much for your time Madison yeah yeah thank you